we got this topic up here. Uh, JB Wealth on Twitter said he deal with landlords all the time, and he says seven to ten out of landlords say that having rental properties is nothing but a headache. Welcome to the Pass Money Plan. I'm Kirby. That's Alex right there. Please hit the subscribe button, the like button, and we're going to dive into this. So, Alex, what do you believe is one of the reasons why 7 out of 10 landlords say that rental properties are a headache? Why do you think 7 out of 10 landlords will say something like that? I don't think they have a good cash flow on that property. Um, I have two, and I'm just starting out, and I think I got good deals on both of them, and I don't have headaches with them um i mean this the second one is just recent so but i mean it's been a month in and i haven't gotten any calls or nothing so um but even with the first one i probably had about you know the only issues i had was like a septic tank thing which was just draining it and then uh since i had bought like uh a dryer and washing machine for the for the place there was issues with that which Learn from that. I'll probably never buy those appliances again for a rental property, but those are the only mistakes. I mean, um, other than that, the tenants are great. Um, it, you know, the, the, this, this one in the second property is a long-term tenant, a uh, real respectful guy. I don't foresee having any conflicts with him. Um, the, the previous owner said he was a great tenant. Um, you know, I have to see how it goes, but uh, no issues so far as far as just the property and then tenant on the other one, great tenant, um, no issues. So I think that people that are having headaches, they're not cash flowing enough, so it's not worth it for them. Then when they do get issues that arise, there's not enough cash flow to cover it. So then they do like just some kind of quick repair and then it causes more issues down the line. And then the tenant is upset. They're starting to complain about it. And they're having those, you know, conflicts with the tenant. I think, you know, it depends on how you enter into your deal is going to determine the long term result of, uh, you know, of your outcome. Right. And uh, so let's dive into that for a minute. So the first one you said, uh, we we'll, we'll start off with cash flow, cash flow. And this goes back to a video we did where we did a reaction to Ice Cube. Well, Ice Cube said, if you're not prepared to make a dollar for the first five years, then don't get started. People have this great imagination that as soon as you get the rental property, as soon as the rich check comes, you can you know, pay for the mortgage and then you can blow the rest of the money. So, Alex, I'll ask you, you know, first rental property, you had that one lower. So we'll talk about that one. So when the rent check comes in, what do you do with the access? What do you do with the cash flow? It just goes straight to a savings account. That's it. And just right. and then so that's why you don't have headaches when something arises. I know we know we might text back and forth and be like, "Damn, such a tank" or whatever. But then, <laughs> but it ain't like you sitting over here trying to cut off a kidney to try to pay for it and get it done. Right, right? right? It's just all right. The tenant call you. You be like, "All right, I'll get it done," and then you get it done. Right. So. So, yeah, so the first thing is, you know, you brought these up and I'm just diving into what you already said, is people think that it's a piggy bank. They have one rental property, maybe two max, and then they just say, oh, this is what, this is for my lifestyle, I get to do it. And they're not focused on running a business, they're just hoping for a couple of extra dollars every now and then. And then when problems arise, because that's the one thing that we know is going to happen for sure, problems will arise if you own a home for any amount of time, there will be an issue. You know those are going to come and they're not prepared for those. Um, and then you brought up the deal. The, the deal, that's where, that's where it all started. People buy so wrong. And then I talk to real estate agents and then they'll come to me with a deal and I'll be like, oh, I'll buy it for X price. Of course, X price is always below listing price. And then, you know, then they, sometimes they will come down to the price. Sometimes they'll be like, no, you're crazy. And then somebody else will buy it. I didn't have times where I come down that I'll be like, hey, we got to come down 20, 30K below this. The realtor say I'm crazy. They sell it to somebody else who didn't do the numbers and they paid the list price. And then that person is putting it back on the market two or two or three months later because it doesn't work. So people don't know how to do the numbers to get a good deal to make sure it's advantageous to them. And then that screws them over also. Some people are... I mean, especially in Florida, some people are breaking even or their cash flow negative on the properties. And then they're just hoping, 
oh, well, I'm just betting on appreciation. If you're going to get in the rental property game, cash flow is the only definite you should be shooting for. Appreciation may happen. It may not happen. Hell, we might get a 2007 issue, I mean, time where appreciation comes down. The only thing you should be searching for is cash flow. If appreciation happens, great. But you know the cash flow will be there. So if you're buying deals that's cash flow even or cash flow negative, you're setting yourself up. So when you said that they got into the deal at a bad price, they're getting, them, they're getting into deals at horrible prices. Absolutely horrible prices. And I agree with you there. That's another reason why 7 out of 10. And I didn't look at it as, oh, 7 out of 10 is correct. I'm just thinking 7 out of 10 landlords don't know what the hell they're doing. And then... Another one that I wanted to jump into, I don't know if you brought it up because I was uh I was so focused on not doing a great deal. The margins was thin. But uh they do a terrible job at screening the tenants. You know, they they sit there and then, oh, this person, the rent's a thousand bucks, this person make two thousand dollars. Oh, that's enough for rent. No, that's 50% of the income. So if they got a car payment, that's probably another, that's probably another 25% of the income. And then utilities, food, water, how do you think they're going to pay it? You don't, they don't understand the financial dynamics. The person who's buying, who's renting your property should at least be making three times what the rent is. I mean, you could be more, you could be more hardcore and be like, what the rent is plus utilities, they need to be making three times more than that. But people don't look at that. They'd be like, oh, they make $2,000, $1,000 a month, they can afford it. That's 50% of their income. It don't, it don't paint. It don't pencil. And then, of course, they're not spending the money to do background checks and things like that. Uh, they probably been evicted all over the place. They ain't doing credit checks and stuff like that. So they do a terrible job of screening the tenants. So that's what this thing shows me, that seven out of 10 landlords don't know what the hell they're doing. And then they get screwed over. Well, they're not getting screwed over. They're screwing themselves over because they don't want to put in the work to know exactly the right thing to do. So... That is one that's very, very interesting to me that seven out of 10, and just seven out of 10 of the people that he know or landlords that he know uh, say it's nothing but headaches. And then they don't know how to operate on a, they don't know how to operate, period. Their, their operational skills on how they conduct business and stuff like that. Of course, everybody want to, oh no, I don't want to use a property manager because that's money that I can have. Property management alleviates the headaches. You don't have to deal with the night to night phone calls and you don't have to deal with the, oh, the tenant won't pay, so you got to sit there and do all the work. That's why you pay somebody else to do it, so you don't have to deal with the headaches. I mean, I might, like I said in the previous video, I might talk to a property manager once a month, you know, just checking up on things, or once every three months, you know, once a quarter or something like that. It's not an everyday dialogue. Every time, you know, a faucet break or something like that, they're calling me to get it fixed. I mean, I'll get an email about it that I'll read later, but I don't have to sit there and make the call and tell them that, you know, I got to call a plumber. I got to go out there and get my wrench, get my handy dandy tube belt on and stop the vacation with my family to go. I don't have to do that. So the headaches is headaches they created by themselves by one, uh, not doing a good deal. They don't know how to operate. They, they're not saving the capital. They're spending all the money. So, they, so their capital allocation sucks. So those are the reasons why that, in my opinion, why seven out of the 10 landlords of this gentleman talk to say landlord landlording is nothing but a headache. Alex, you got anything else? Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. That's that, you know, those are all the points I made. Um, the, the screening, the tenants thing is very important. I think the, the tenant is going to determine whether or not you're going to have headaches. I believe the, the condition of the property, mm -hmm. the tenants, you know, if you have a crappy house but a great tenant, you're gonna have problems. If you have a great house, a crappy tenant, you're gonna have problems. Um, you know, so you gotta make sure that you get your inspection, you know all the issues beforehand with the property. As soon as you close, they're resolved, they're fixed, the house is good. Now you get a good tenant. And I mean, this first tenant, and maybe this is just like the key to tenants, but it's all like both my tenants are old people. I mean, so like they're I don't think they have any energy to raise havoc in those properties. You know what I mean? So in the first one, I know how much he's making. He makes great money. And I mean, the rent that I charge him is probably, you know, a fifth, a sixth of his income. So he, he makes great income. Um, so you don't, you won't have to worry about, you won't have to worry about 
him not making income to pay it. Exactly. And yeah. you so, know, and, and he's he's shown me uh that he is adamant about paying it. I mean, he had an issue with his bank and he didn't tell me directly, he told his boss who I also work with. Um and his boss was telling me and as soon as he was paid, he said, I'm going to pay Alex. And he didn't tell me this. This was his boss telling me this. And so it's like he he's I've already seen that he is he's adamant he's going to pay his rent. There's no issues with that. I know he's got the income coming in. Uh, they moved up here from Miami. They ha they don't know anybody. So it's not like they're going to have people coming over, throwing parties and stuff. So, you know, he just goes to work, comes home with his family and that's it. And then the guy up in Georgia, he's probably approaching 70 years old. <laughs> you know, he's not going to do nothing crazy, you know. So he, uh, he's been there for 16 years. So, I mean, in, in, in a sense, that house is already his home for as long as he's been there. You know what I mean? So he's not going to. He's not going to destroy the place that he's comfortable with living at. Yeah, and, and for me, um, and people can take it, throw it away. I don't care how they look at it. I mean, I love I love the military, uh, but I don't I don't love the new soldiers. And I ain't talking about the new soldiers in this day and age, like new soldiers coming in. I mean, I used to be a private. I know what we did in these damn homes. <laughs> I mean, we. We was wrecking some banding, you know, parties. There's all kind of stuff going on in these houses. I'm not, I'm not a fan of. Uh, I don't. I mean, if I if I buy rentals by a military base, it will be higher than entry level uh, units. So I'll be renting it out to the upper echelon of the, you know, leadership. I will not, I will not rent it to the lower, the lower ranking people because just the cost of it will be too high that the lower ranking people couldn't afford it. College towns, I feel the same way about that. I was in college. I know how the dorm parties and the parties at the apartments be, and I don't want to risk it, you know. But it's the screening of tenants is you got to know these things. You can't just buy blindly and think that, oh, everything is going to be good. The only thing that's for sure is something bad is going to happen. And if you're not capitalized for it, you're going to screw yourself. And yes, that means you're getting your first couple of rental properties and you're saving all the cash in case something happens. Eventually, you want to have you want to have enough units that you can have cash flow, put money in your pocket, and you can still uh, hold reserves for stuff will happen. But one unit, two units, I wouldn't be spending a damn dime out of none of those. I would just be using it to hold up capital to let it play out. Absolutely. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, uh, share the video, comment. Uh, subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video.